Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Did you catch the 37 on the clock? Did anybody see that? This is my first wife, Sharon, <laughs> right here, right here. Yes, that's it. I need your glasses on today. They perfectly match my coat. Well, we, we're matching, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny thing, how many times we'll walk out of the house and we got the same colors on. And I'll, first thing I'll go is, uh-oh, because it, it, it's a known fact that when you get a certain age, for some odd reason, they think they have to dress alike. Especially retired people. You'll see <laughs> yeah. them a lot the same yeah. outfit on, but it just, it's an accident when I, it happens. I know. But what, what, do, what, what do you think retired would feel like? I don't think I'll ever find out. Yeah, no. <laughs> Married to you, I don't think I'll ever find I, out. A lot, a lot of, uh, I've talked to wives that, that say their husband was talking about retirement at 50. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, oh my goodness. <laughs> I always <laughs> thought I would be retired. My husband and I would be retired when I was about 50. You, but should, have married, a, you should have married the school teacher you were going with. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, Herman. Let's go on here. When I, when I, I, I can't believe you said I, that. I met her in college and she was don't, engaged. Don't. <laughs> and, and, go on with the and, program, and please. I, <laughs> and, and so I pulled her away from the school teacher to this gang leader from Chicago, Illinois. So, so anyway, we're going back that far in history. Perfect. Yes, it's perfect. She's she's a Mennonite background, and which puts her into the category of very private. Married to you, that's a little tough to do. Yeah, that's right. That's say. true. <laughs> we have a special guest. His name is. I love this name because you can't believe how many people I have on the show that I, I'll say, now give me that last name again, you know, because it's hard to pronounce, but his name is Max, get this, it's tough, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, my grandpa and grandma, that was their name, Davis. That's true. He holds a degree in journalism and, take a look at him, Dave, and biblical studies, there he is, I love that goatee. <laughs> and is a much sought after speaker for churches and organizations worldwide. He has published over 20 books and has been featured in USA Today. <laughs> Stop it. And publishes weekly <laughs> <laughs> and has appeared on Today, The 700 Club, Herman and Sharon Now. <laughs> okay, good to have you. Good to be I'm here. a little whacked. Okay. Y'all are inspiring. <laughs> I, I, I paid him to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. We covered that back in the green room. Not really, because he has no idea what I'm going to do, and I don't know what he's going to do. But I, let me give you a little idea, because because this book is the weirdest title, and I don't want you to be offended when I show it to you. Dave's going to put the book up on the screen, and, and you'll be able to get your copy. So don't be put out because of the title. When Jesus was a green-eyed brunette, okay? <laughs> and there's the website. You're going to be glad you got the book if you can get past the cover, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. Can, Dave, can you get a shot of this wherever wherever the camera might, might be, whichever one I can, there it is, right there. Look at that, he sent me a cup. Uh -huh. And so now we, so have, now we have two cups. Did you get the chocolates that were in there? No. Yeah. Somebody stole the Some chocolates. <laughs> yeah, Linda Opsel loves chocolate. <laughs> she, she, she's our assistant that happens to be sick There today. was chocolate cocoa in there mix. Ah. And then some of those expensive chocolate Christmas things. Oh, okay. So. so I'll hunt it down. Yeah. I'll hunt it down. <laughs> so, so how would they get this, the viewer? The cup? Yes, because they can go to the website. Only you could get the cup. Okay. Oh, oh. See, yeah. this is it. It's a promo, <laughs> Herman. Special. It's promo. It's sitting if, right. If they really want a cup, yes. tell them to go to my website and, and send me an email that they want a cup. Okay. And, I, and I'll send them a cup. Okay, did you hear that? You'll, you'll, he'll have his email. I, I think we got to. It, it, yeah, you go to my website. Okay, that's perfect. Let's kick them on to the email. Yep. Okay, let's, I, I just want to give you a little idea of the chapter headings. Jesus in the coffee aisle. If you don't like that chapter, try this one. Peanut butter and four-lettered 
and four letter curse words. If you don't like that one, you can move on. Yeah. A green eyed brunette. That's the title, okay? You have to get to chapter three before you get to that one, all right? Uh, the Voice, and I don't mean the TV show. That's a chapter. I, the, now get this, he writes and is a co-writer for other people that write books. So that's how good this guy is. Uh, bleeding all over the pages, uh, iron butts <laughs> and journalism. Jesus dancing with a little black girl in a red dress, on and on. 14 chapters, you're gonna love it. So you get your copy, I've got mine, okay? Growing up, mm -hmm. what was that like? You know, I, you know I, I, I grew up in a very fundamental religious background. Really? And, oh yeah. I mean, no movies? <laughs> well, because I, I grew up in a, ba in a background, literally, no movies, at definitely no cursing. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't even mm -hmm. didn't even allow me to hold a deck of cards, mm -hmm. and certainly mm -hmm. not dice. Mm -hmm. Very strict. You, you pretty much got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I grew up thinking God was mad at me because that's all I heard. Yeah. Now now I have to say my mom and dad love me. I have a great relationship with my mom and dad, but I could see they're struggling. But they they were they grew up in a very legalistic, religious background. And now, what so, what does that mean, legalistic? Well, just exactly what you said. You know, everybody outside of our and I don't want to I don't want to hurt anybody, but everybody outside of our little group right. was, was going to hell, hmm. and that's what I heard preached. Like I, I can remember my mom, and, and she gave me permission. You know, I can remember my mom. You know, growing up, I can remember seeing her in the bathroom crying. And she dropped the brush and she looked at me and she said, am I, am I going to hell because I cut my hair? You know, wow. so she struggled with that. Um, I can remember my grandmother um, just struggling and just being, just being torn up inside because she went to a movie to see uh, Corey Ten Boom, um, <laughs> uh, the, the movie, um, uh, The Hiding Place. Yeah. I, and, and here I am. But it was I, in a theater. It was in a theater. Yeah. And, and I was a little guy growing up like a fly on the wall, and I was seeing all of this. Yeah. And, and I remember going to church, and I mean, obviously, there were wonderful people that loved the Lord, but all I saw was mm -hmm. everybody else is going to hell. And, and I mean, I, mean I, I grew up being told over and over again, God's gonna punish you. And, and I can literally remember going to bed at night afraid that if I died mm -hmm. in, in the middle of the night, I was gonna go to hell. And, and so I would say the quick little prayer, you know, now I lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord my soul yeah. to keep. Mm -hmm. But there was no relationship yeah. there. I, yeah. All I knew was God was mad he killed all the people in the flood. He burnt Sodom and Gomorrah. He was going to destroy the world. And that angry, was, very angry. Very angry. That was my concept of God. And now what? Now what? From people, in your in your teenage years, you still had that. Right? Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah yeah yeah. I mean I mean what was instilled in me as a child was that God was pretty much out to get me, and he was mad at me and he was disappointed in me. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I heard he loved me, but certainly he didn't like me, and and certainly he was disappointed in me, and and so. So did you just say, you know what? I could never live yes, that. Yes, exactly. So the H with it. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But I was a good guy. I was I was your typical extrovert, nice guy, you know, needed to be liked. So so on the surface, it appeared everything. Was, was, was good, but there was this internal struggle going on in me, and, and, and as I grew older, I became more and more rebellious. Wow. You say, you say yeah. girls, football, and cars <laughs> consume my thoughts. Well, I mean, like most, most. I would say it's pretty normal. Pretty, yeah, pretty normal. I'd say, <laughs> I'd say I fit in that category back in my youth days. Yeah, but I mean. Sharon's it, taken me away from that. All of that is gone. And I have to say this. My granddad was a preacher. And on Your grand, what kind of church? Well, okay. So, so to give you an idea of, of who I, where I came from, 
My granddad on my mom's side was a pastor of a church, and they believed that speaking in tongues was of the devil. Okay. And when I tell you how religious they were, like the men didn't wear ties, the women couldn't wear makeup, uh, they couldn't cut their hair, um, um, no jewelry. Yeah. And, you but, know, so I, it was holiness. Holiness, but they, but they, no musical instruments in the church. Yeah, yeah. And they believed that speaking in tongues was of the devil. Okay. And they said so. Beautiful people that love God. Okay. Yeah. My granddad on my dad's side was a Church of God Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Got the Holy Ghost in a, in a field plowing a mule behind a mule named Emma. Got the Holy Ghost in a field, came in from the field speaking in tongues. So she married, he married my mom. <laughs> so did, did he meet the devil out there? What, what happened? <laughs> so, so, so really, I grew well, up Well, that's with, a little confusing for a kid then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> was. And see, see, see so, so one church preached if you were, wore ties and right. women. Could, my mom didn't have a wedding ring for years. It, it killed her. She wanted to have a wedding ring. Yeah. And then finally, she rebelled. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid she rebelled and bought a wedding ring. I, so I grew up in this church where no ties, the men didn't wear ties, women didn't. And then the next Sunday we go to my dad's church. And they're jumping around? With ties. And Did they jump? Oh, jump. They got music in the church. Yeah. Playing yeah. the piano. Bang, Raise bang, their bang, 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 bang. Right. Bang, bang, bang on the piano. Yeah. But the other church, if you had music in the church, you were going to hell. So like here I am in the middle, like okay, and and and, and, they, and nobody and, taught me about Jesus. And they all believed the Bible, right? They all believed the Bible. Yeah, but what you just said, but nobody taught you about Jesus and yeah. either one of them. I'm talking about the real Jesus. Yes, I know what you're and, saying. And, and obviously they did. Yeah. Obviously I went to yeah, Sunday school. They talked about Jesus, right? But I didn't. It never clicked never with me yeah. who Jesus really was, right? As a person, right? And he was certainly mad at me, certainly. <laughs> but I tell you about my dad on the Pentecostal side. You know, he got he got kicked out of church when he was a teenager for going to rodeo <laughs> and for wearing blue jeans, and that's on the Pentecostal side. And then on on, on the, you know, so so so. Well, I, well, the Pentecostals and the Charismatics have certainly moved. Yeah. I th sometimes I wonder if they moved either a little fast. Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. stop reading the Bible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and started quoting their own mm -hmm. mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, some of it has got a little crazy. Yeah. And I'm not out, I'm Pentecostal, I preach, I, 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 you know, I'm full gospel. So I love these people. My book is dedicated to my granddad and my grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my granddad on the, on the holiness, non-speaking in tongue side, sent me money when I was attending ORU. So, so my granddaddy loved me and my grandmother loved me. And, and so there was no question about that. Mm -hmm. And there's no question that they love God. Yeah. It's just the, my perception of God. Right, right. Was that he was mad at me. Yeah. So when did you come to a knowledge of who Jesus Christ was? <sighs> Which church? <laughs> Neither one. <laughs> um, so getting back to your, you know, um, you know, I, so, so I kind of rebelled. I was a nice guy. Um, got a lot of paddling. You could paddle back then. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got paddled and suspended yeah. and all of that. Did stuff. they explain to you why you were getting paddled? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I have a whole chapter in the book about my, the first time I went to the principal's office yeah. for punching out a guy in the nose and making him bleed. You know, that was the principal was kind of my image of God. You know, that he was mad at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And regardless of how I explain my situation. So you're waiting on outside of this door, and when you walk in, there's God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the principle. Yeah, and he's got wrinkles, and he's, and he's angry, <laughs> yeah. and, and he's, that's my perception of, of God. And he's going to send you straight to hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even if I cried. Even if you cried. Told him I'm sorry. Yeah. But what's interesting, at night, I miss Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. I miss the real Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, the Holy Spirit draws yeah, us. Yes, yeah, isn't yes, that wonderful? Yes, I knew something yeah. was calling yeah. me. So, so I was this. To give you the to get, answer the story. I was this high school jock. I was all I was most athletic in my in my school. You're a real jock, weren't you? I, I got a scholarship to play football at Ole Miss. 
Oh, wow. I drove a 1972 Grand Torino Sport. Oh, Clint you know, Eastwood. Oh, Clint Eastwood, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the same one that yeah. was in the Clint Eastwood movie, except it was a different color. Um, I had hair down to here, you know. I mean, I owned the school, you know. I mean, I was Max Davis. I was. And, and, when, and when, when girls walked by, oh, in, in fact, was, in fact, <laughs> you saw the incredible green-eyed brunette. Yes. How did so, that happen? So here's the deal. You get this picture. Yes, I got it. I'm this extrovert yeah. football player. Cool. Cool guy. Blue jeans. Everybody likes me. You know, yeah. they have to. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, but, but I'm struggling with God yeah. mm -hmm. in the background. Because he's pulling on you. He's pulling on me. And I have to go to church because... Yeah. I'm, I, I'm forced to go to church yeah. because of my, so, so this whole thing. So you honored your parents. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So, it, so the struggle's going on, but, but underneath I was getting more and more rebellious. Like I say in yeah. the book, mm -hmm. you know, I was going places I shouldn't be. Drink. I was drinking, getting involved with things that could have yeah. ru ruined my life. Um, my grandmother and mom, you know, my mom cried to my grandmother and said, what's going on with Max? And she said, just pray, pray, pray. He's going up Fool's Hill. He'll come down. And I Quite an expression. Yeah. Right. And I was going up Fool's Hill. And, and I was doing things that, you know, were not, not nice. That'd be a great song title. Yeah. <laughs> going up Fool's Hill. So all this is going on in my mind. And um, I walk through the school doors, and it's a 1500 our 1200 member school so it's a pretty big school this is kind of at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. so everybody's and and i see this this angel <laughs> she is like in the movie you know she yeah. just there's a crowd of there's a glow around her there's a glow around her <laughs> wow there's a glow there literally was a glow around her yes i can see it and and when i saw this this green-eyed brunette my life, I'm, I'm gonna cry right now. <laughs> my life has never been the same. Oh. I mean, it was like something about her drew me to her. And obviously there was the hormones. Obviously she was <laughs> the most incredible, beautiful woman I'd ever seen. But did I, she notice you? Yeah, sorta, kinda, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we made, but, but it was one of those things where it was different than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't know if I can say this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I, I couldn't lust after her. There was something pure about her. There was something different about her, and, and I couldn't go there like other girls. I could fantasize yeah. about and all, yeah. like yeah, high school. With her, I couldn't. I just, I it just there was wow. a purity about her. Wow. But I didn't know what it was. Well, one thing led to another. We wound up going on a date, first date, and uh, in the Grand Torino. Sure. <laughs> class and you know I look back on it I was 17 yeah and she was 15 oh my goodness she was, you were she, young oh she was a very mature 15 believe me believe me <laughs> and what amazes me is her dad let her let me go out with her which which was a god thing but back then it was different yeah back then it was yeah. different that was yeah. different yeah. and and the dad who's my spiritual father and lord wow on uh, now I mean, he knew, he knew something was, he knew who I was. It wasn't like, yeah, yeah. so we, you know, when we were on a date, it was to a pizza place and a movie. We got 10 minutes. Yeah. Move, move this into, did you, well, you, did you get me. married? Well, later, a long time. Okay, well, how did well, that, how wait, did, wait, wait, yes. let me see. So I'm on the date, I'm on the date with her, and, um, you know, I had all these, anyway, the bottom line is, it was Jesus. You know? sure, sure, I saw Jesus in her, sure. and she just was, in love with Jesus, and we had this incredible relationship uh, date. And that night, I remember I told her, I says, I'd like to go out with you, but I'll never go to church with you. So that tells you where I was. But she found out where? Three, day, three weeks later, I was in church with her. Yeah. At an incredibly wonderful church, and the Holy Spirit fell on me. And um, um, So you were saved. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was radically saved. Yeah. And so what I saw in her was the living Jesus living in her. So what happened to your and relationship? That's what I was trying. Well, we became, we became really good friends <laughs> and we went our separate ways, you know, um, after that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I always remembered her, how God used well, her. Well, obviously you did, you wrote a book. Yeah. Well, you read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna read it. Yeah. Huh. 
So, so okay, take us from there because there's, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot more. Let, let, the, the, book, the book is about seeing the living Jesus yeah. inside people. That's it. And, and loving, God, loving God the way people does when we allow the presence of Jesus. Yeah. And that's what she did. <laughs> You talk about God's process of molding me into Jesus' image. Yeah. It's a process. Yes, it is. Well, the will of God is not so much that we go and do something, but that we become. And That's that molding. That's that molding. Yeah. And, and before we can really do, we have to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's about a relationship. <clears throat> and see, I saw... I saw Christianity as religion, as rules, as doing. And if, if you did a, 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 X, Y, Z, God was happy. If you didn't do X, Y, Z, God was mad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's about a relationship with mm -hmm. Jesus. And, and when he comes in, when we receive his life, then he begins to move around the furniture. What amazes me is you had all of these football scholarship offers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somehow your desire, right? Oh, had changed. Absolutely. Well, before that, your desire was to play football, and to, um, you know, I, I was going to major in physical therapy or, or something yeah. like that. So, so, so now you're seeing something's going on here. Well, if what happened was when Jesus comes into us, He changes us, and really Jesus became my best friend, and we became, I mean. I, was, I spent hours and hours in prayer. I'd walk through the woods, talk with God. I couldn't get enough of his word. Wow, and <clears throat> I just thought that was normal. I just thought that's what you did. Well, you, you, you heard the voice. I heard the voice. So one day. What does that sound like? <laughs> I, so, so one day I'm driving down. I, I'd gotten the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, true story. And, and if you read this, I hate exaggeration. Okay, so, so I hate stories where Christians say God did this and God did, and it's exaggerated. I'm a journalist, so literally I, I like to go by the facts. So what happened in my life was I never read a book. I had a 1.5 GPA going into my senior year. I had, to get, I had to make almost straight A's to get my GPA up to where I could get a 2.0 so I could get a scholarship. I hated reading. I mean, it just... It, it, it just, it was like the complete opposite of who I was, mm -hmm. I thought. So I'm driving down the road one night, and I kid you not, I heard a voice. Now, whether it was audible, and I put this in the book, it was internal, I don't know, I heard it. Yeah. it. It was a thought that came to me totally foreign That's right. from my thought process. Mm -hmm. And I literally answered it, I went, whoa. And the thought was, you're going to write books, and they're going to go all over the world. I like, you just think this. I'm a 17-year-old kid driving down the road, <laughs> and that thought goes in my head. You're going to write books, and they're going to go all over the world. And yeah. I, I can literally, to this day, I can remember turning and looking to see if someone was sitting next to me. And I went, whoa, where did that come from? Yeah. And what happened was everything about me changed. There was a seed that was planted in me, and I began to grow and with this desire to write. Here's a guy, I couldn't even, I was making D's in English. I couldn't tell you what a <laughs> verb and a noun and you know. Yeah. So I got, the, but I got this scholarship. That's what you call supernatural. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I had no idea how it was going In fact, you talk, uh, 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 there are other stories in the book, by the way, of others <laughs> hearing the voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a whole, because uh, mm -hmm. you're a journalist. I mean, you yep. can, mm -hmm. and, and you probably said now, you're not making this up, right? You're not exaggerating. Right. Oh, oh, I, I, I interview people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and people tell me their stories. I get a lot of. <laughs> he was told this, speaking the <laughs> fact that he is now a writer. Writing is easy. <clears throat> Max, you just open up your heart and bleed all over the pages. <laughs> Did you find that to be true? Yeah, well, see, what, what happened is when God called me, and if I'd have known, I should have brought it. You know, I'm, I'm actually writing my book in my high school. Can you picture that? A 17-year-old kid writing a book that I think is going to be published because I heard this voice. Oh. And I still have that writing today. 
Oh, that you, you still? Oh, I still have it. Oh. I, I could brought it and show it to you. That is and I had one of my friends who was an art student design me. We didn't have computers back then. Yeah. Design a book cover. I mean, I thought it was going to happen then. <laughs> Little did I know it was going to be a 30-year process yeah. just to get my first book published. But the bleeding on the pages, I had a writing teacher one time told me, you know, this is after I got a master's degree, okay? She says, writing's easy, Max. You just bleed all over the pages. She says, you need to go live a little. And I'm like, wow. And that's been the story of my book. And you know, like, married, and you had a son that was deaf. I have a son that's totally deaf. Now, so if you do that, yeah. when you did that, that's that right. yes, yeah, I've done that for, since 1977. Yeah, like, like, yeah. you know, my son is 28 now, maybe 29. He's completely deaf. We've prayed for him for 29 years. Was he born that way? He was born that way. Yeah. We didn't find out till about a, a year or so afterwards. Yeah. But it just rips your heart out to see your child suffer and your child go through right. things. Now you've gone through marriage problems. Well, yeah. Um, not time. with the green eyed bread. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have enough time yeah, to. No. <laughs> but see, this, this is called teasing them to get the book. <laughs> teasing them to get yeah, the book. That's right. Otherwise, yes. they'll go, You covered the whole book. Why would I need it? God is faithful. Yeah. Mm. And he, he takes our pain and our bleeding. Yeah. And, and if we allow him, he will use that to transform our lives. About a minute, that camera's yours. In Somebody needs to know what happened in your heart. Mm. Share that with them. Jesus is real. He's alive. Hope is a person, okay? Hope is a person. And, and he wants you to receive his life. And when you receive his life, he comes inside of you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to, to change your life. You have to receive his life. Amen. And then he begins to do his work in you. And you know, you can be doing the work of God wherever you're at because he wants to use everything in your life, all of your hurts, all of your pains to conform you to his image because he's preparing us for something. He's preparing us for eternity. And then as you begin conforming to his image, he's gonna start using you in ways uh, that you never thought possible. And he will take the deepest hurts and he will, he will heal you and then he will use those hurts um, to transform your life. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amen. Man. Amen. Thanks, man. And Jesus is real. Yeah. He's real. Yeah. That's right. How many years ago did you trust Christ? It's been close to 40, right at 40 now. Isn't it amazing? And it still brings tears to his eyes. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. And I trusted Christ in 1958. <laughs> and it still does the same thing to me. Today could be your day. Mm -hmm. And when I say trust, that's what you do. You trust him and you invite him to come in. Mm -hmm. And he will. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.